Yesterday, the Chicago Bulls went out there and added Taylor Horton Tucker to the roster, giving him an opportunity to make this roster during training camp. I got a few questions about it because I'm a bit confused about the move in its entirety. Y'all let me know if I'm tripping. But before we break it down and y'all be able to let me know if I'm tripping, y'all know we got to break it down and y'all got to hear the music first. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's daily episode. If you're tuned in with me today, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well. We are so close to the 7K mark. Make sure you subscribe and you help us get us there so this content continue to be fire, letting you know. But, hey, it was first reported by Shams yesterday that the Chicago Bulls went out there and added Taylor Horton Tucker to his roster with a, as a partially guaranteed contract. Uh, me, personally, looking at the player, I'm not too mad at the player. I'm not saying he's a terrible player. I'm not saying he's an absolutely great player. But he is a solid role player for a team like the Chicago Bulls and could be something that a lot of other teams find as can be a solid piece. My man has had multiple stops around the NBA right now. Got to play with some superstars over there in uh, Los Angeles. And then I believe he went over there with Utah this past season. But the Chicago Bulls picked him up. And I'm not so I'm not so mad about it. I'm honestly, I'm not even mad at all. I'm just confused about it. Why would you go and add another guard, Chicago Bulls? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. Why go out and add another guard to an already complicated situation? Now, when we talk about Taylor Hort Tucker last season, he gave his respective team to Utah Jazz 20 minutes per game, 10 uh 10 points. Two rebounds, three assists, 39% shooting from the field, and 33% shooting from the three-point line. Okay, not bad for a guy that's playing 20 minutes. That means he's averaging about two points uh, every uh, a point every two minutes, something like that, along the lines. Hey, this is early. We ain't doing a bunch of math, but nonetheless, the problem is, is why I'm so confused is that there are too many damn guards on this squad. Without Taylor Horton Tucker being listed as somebody that's on the roster early on, the Bulls got eight guards. You add in this young fella, there's now nine guards. Now, understand that when we consider everybody that's included, we're looking at guys like Orlot Bitteam, who's kind of like at the end of that uh, depth chart right now, as it currently stands, who could become a casualty if Taylor Horton Tucker, you know, places himself in good being and can show that he can be a part of a squad and provide the Chicago Bulls something. But then I, I look at it, I'm like, is that all? Is that all? Because when we're looking at the guards that could potentially play and take up minutes for this team, Zach Levine ain't going nowhere. Josh Giddy ain't going nowhere. Kobe White ain't going nowhere. And then after that, you start looking. Ayodo Sumo ain't going nowhere. We know that's a fact. Daylon Terry, are you going to stunt his chances? How much of a chance are you going to get him? Julian Phillips, I understand he's playing that forward spot. But this is one of the guys that could be one of your guards as well. Come in, but as of right now, they got him playing that. They got him listed as one of the forwards on the squad. But when we look at Taylor Horton Tucker, I'm just looking at him like, look, he's not a terrible player, but what is he necessarily going to give the Chicago Bulls? Hey, I talked to C-Dub offline. Y'all let me know if it's crazy or Bobby, am I going too far? Chicago Bulls. <laughs> is this reassurance for Lonzo Ball? Hell no, nah, it ain't. Y'all know it ain't. Come on now. <laughs> if we keeping it a buck, Taylor Horton Tucker does not solve the backup point guard solution. He could be a filler, but it's not something I'm going to be 100% confident in moving forward hell i'm not even too confident about the whole lonzo ball stuff but me i'd rather wait and see what he can give or if he's not a available i'd rather give the guy the, the opportunity to another guy daylon terry at this particular moment as it stands give it to another guy maybe you give it maybe you re-evaluate and look at the whole catfish leroy javon carter situation i don't know but at the point is that 
It's just too much going on. Me personally, after the Chicago Bulls went out and got Kenny Lofton, I'm like, okay, cool. There looks like there's trying to be some type of investment in the front court. Why not go out and attack that again will be my question. Why not continue to look at prospects that can be in your front court? Why? Because guys get in foul trouble. Nikola Vucevic has been there before, and Jalen Smith, he absolutely can be there. We've seen multiple times during these games this past season where both our bigs was in foul trouble, and the Chicago Bulls went out there and played a bunch of smaller guys to play their center spot. So if both of these two players, you know what I'm saying, found themselves in some foul trouble, where do you go? Where do you turn to? And what are the chances of Kenny Lofter actually making his team? That's the same thing that's going to come around with Taylor Holler, Taylor Horton Tucker, THT. That's the same thing that's coming around with him. Me personally, if you ask me outside of all of the confusion, I believe the chances to make the squad is extremely low. That's just me. I can be wrong. You got other guys that's fighting for this. Chris Duarte. How you want to look at him for one of your guards? I'm just saying. That's why it was so confusing to me. You got all this investment going around and all these guys coming in and it just seemed like it's so much confusion, especially with all these guards that's up in here. And then there's not much certainty when it comes to your front court with your fourth spot. Is it Patrick Williams? Okay, cool. We're going to say it's Patrick Williams. Who backing him up? Is it Montes? Or he playing a three? Is it Torrey Craig? We don't know. That's why it's so damn confusing. Bro, get us some people in here who can actually pay the four or the five. Let's look at more, let's look at more players in those roles. Why? Because Nikola Vula, Nikola Vucevic, he ain't the future. If you're gonna go and look at a young talented player, and I ain't saying THT is not talented, why not look to the investment of your front court? You already invested in your backcourt. You got money going out to Zach Levine. You picked up Josh Giddy, and he's on the last year of his current deal. You got Kobe White for a steal, but he going to have to get paid years, that, uh, probably in another year or so. Ayo Dosuma was still around, and I still got other hope for other guys like Daylon Terry. Then I'm anxious to see what Lonzo Ball could potentially bring to the squad. And I'm not saying Lonzo Ball is a long-term solution because we don't know what the injury is like, but at the same time, why not just say, hey, he's been trending in the right direction. Let's give him a fair shot to make sure that he's good to go. So it could be looked at some type of reassurance. I don't necessarily know. It's just a, some, a question that came in my mind. Maybe I could be tripping. I don't know. But for my train of thought is we need more investment in the front court. I understand Julian Phillips is 6'8". He's skinny as hell, though. You need some size in there. You need some size in there. How about another seven-footer? How about a legit guy that can play the four? Is that what the Chicago Bulls are trying to mold Julian Phillips into? I don't know. We ain't seen much of Julian Phillips. And what's the outlook on Dale and Terry? Let us know. Or wait. We just going to have to find out and deal with it, y'all. That's what it really comes down to. And when we looking at all this stuff, you saying, hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't really make you feel necessarily that great because if we keeping it a buck and C-Dub said it to me offline, THT is good enough to make this team. THT is good enough to take minutes from somebody. Not even going to hold you. Not even going to hold you. And I'm all for the sake of competition. I'm all for it. May the best man win. I'm just saying. There's already competition with brewing and within the locker room, and there should be no question on where the other emphasis should be. In the front court. After Jalen Smith, Nikola Vucevic, what else do you have? Patrick Williams is very well capable of playing the four within this today's NBA but is Torrey Craig the backup that we believe he can be is another question. So I say all in all, the move is not bad. It's just a bit confusing.
for the sake of too many guards and me asking, where's the investment in the front court? Will Adama Sanogu receive a fair shot to make the squad? Is that what you're telling me? If that's what you're telling me, then I have no gripes. If Kenny Lofton is, is, is within the plans of actually making the team, then I have no gripes. At least when it comes to the investment of the front court. But when it comes to the guards, why so many guards? And the, bet, and the worst thing about it is that the guy's not great from the three-point line. Why do you keep attracting or trying to transform guys who are not proven from the three-point line? 33% from the three last season. That's already a problem or an issue we have with Josh Giddy, who shot 33% from the three-point line. We want to add another one? That's all I'm saying. Where if if if, if can, can we be fair? If the Chicago Bulls went out, let's for the sake of discussion, if the Chicago Bulls went out and let's say got Luke Kennard, a three-point specialist. I guarantee you, or at least I would like to expect, we are all feel a little bit better about that because you're saying, damn, this is a legit guy who is a three-point specialist who has the statistics to back it up and has the, the, the resume and all that stuff all right around him to back that statement up like, damn, this is a guy that can be a specialist for us. THT is another ball handler that can't shoot. That's the problem. You're not trying to change the profile of the squad. So what are we doing? Just adding people for the sake to fill a training camp roster? If that's the goal, okay, cool. But couldn't you just done that within trying to invest and see if you can find some more guys that can play your wing positions? some more guys that can potentially come in and be a third center or a backup power forward just in case an injury happens or, you know what I'm saying, guys are not playing particularly well or a guy gets in foul trouble in your front court. Couldn't that have been a solution? I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping, but it's just like, boys, you may, you've been doing so well this offseason, at least you're trying to. It hasn't been perfect, but this is another bonehead mistake, in my opinion. This is another bonehead move from the front office, from my opinion. And I could be taking it overboard. I already, y'all already know I like to overanalyze certain things and look too deeper, too deep into stuff. Hence why I asked the Lonzo Ball question. Are you telling me is this this the reassurance for Lonzo Ball? Is that what you're telling me? I don't have the answer for that. Maybe y'all do, but I'm just saying it doesn't really move me for the simple fact is that, like, what are we trying to do here? We do have a couple of weeks before we get this thing rolling, before we go before we go into training camp and then preseason. But as of right now, as it currently stands, it's just like a head scratcher. It's like, OK, yeah, we got Josh Giddy, but why you ain't getting no picks? Okay, yeah, you helped facilitate a sign and trade for DeMar DeRozan. You just got Chris Dorte in a couple seconds. Okay, fine. Okay, you signed Kenny Lofton Jr. That was solid. Yeah, he got he talented. Cool, cool, cool. And you need some more depth in that front court. Cool, cool, cool. But then it comes to the point, and you're like, damn, another guard, bro? Another guard? That's the problem. Another guard? Another one. It's already gridlocked, damn near. You talking about Kobe White, Josh Giddy, Ayodo Sumu, Zach Levine. Them four ain't going nowhere. So what THT fit in? Because after that, you telling me I got to look at Dalen Terry. I got to look at Lonzo Ball. I got to look at how I'm going to get uh, Chris Duarte, if he's that guy. Javon Carter is still around. Uh, are they going to cut him? Are they going to cut Catfish? Are they going to cut Javon Carter? We don't know. That's why it's a bit confusing for me. I'm not mad at the move. It's just a bit confusing. Let me know if y'all understand my gripes and my complaints. Or, or, or am I just complaining for the sake of complaining? Let me know. <laughs> if you disagree, let me know. We can chop it up down below.
But that is it for me today, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't understand what the boys are doing. Um, yeah. What does this mean for Orlot Batine? What does it mean for guys like Javon Carter, Chris Dorte, Hill, Tory Craig? What does it mean for these guys? What does it mean for Dale and Terry? We shall see. But that is it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and listening to me complain. <laughs> at least I'm, but bro, y'all got to at least let me know if it's a valid point. Can we keep it up? At least let me know if it's valid. Because the, the, the validity behind it is like, where he going to play? Or is it just a body to fill training camp? Let me know. But make sure you subscribe here before you go. If you want to call in and be a part of our mailbag episode that takes place this weekend, call in and leave your take. 773-242-9219 is the number. Thank y'all so much. Make sure you always see red and you already know. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Come on, yeah. Gang.